When Catherine arrived at the recent South Korean state banquet, there was collective gasps across the world because Catherine was wearing a tiara that many people thought was unwearable, that could not be worn because it was too delicate, there were issues, something was going on because we hadn't seen this tiara in 90 years. Actually, in fact, it was given to the Queen Mother a hundred years ago this year on the occasion of her wedding. And since then, the Strathmore Rose Tiara was worn a handful of times before going in the vault, never to be seen again. But guys, recently we were blessed to see this tiara on Catherine yet again. It is so, so exciting when Catherine first brought that out. I just even saw a little bit of it in the picture of her in the car before going to the event. And I was like, oh, it's the Strathmore Rose. And although it's not probably as grand as the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot, I think everybody who has been royal watching for a long time was just so, so thrilled to see this tiara. Again, it was even more special in a way because we hadn't seen it in so long and so many people especially those of you who are royal watchers who love tiaras this one has been one that so many people say is one of their favorites it's it's one they've always wanted to see it's it's something that has always captured a bit of the imagination I think in part because we haven't seen it it has this very delicate nature that you just don't see a ton actually in the British collection the British collection really doesn't have a lot of floral pieces so this is a little bit unusual and so I have to say I was so, so thrilled to see this on Catherine. And there was only one caveat though, it has nothing to do with the TR or Catherine and we will get into that. So to begin, the Strathmore Rose TR was probably made in the 19th century. So it was made sometime in the 1800s. It was given to Elizabeth Lyons Bowles, who we now know as Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, on the occasion of her wedding in 1932 by her parents, who were the Earl and Countess of Strathmore. Hence the name Strathmore Rose. Rose Tiara. This tiara was made by Messrs. Catchpole and Williams of Oxford Street, and it features five large roses separated by diamond sprays and could be separated into brooches. So each of those little flower pieces could actually be utilized in a brooch as well. And it was supplied actually with two frames. One is invisible to wear over the brow. So we've actually seen Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, wearing this tiara over the brow. It's something that was more in the 20s. We haven't seen it much since. And then there's one obviously padded to wear across the head. And you could actually see a bit of the padding and a bit of that frame on Catherine. So I will say the details here aren't clear, but my understanding is, is that the center stones in each of the flower could be exchanged for five single colette sapphires. So it's not clear exactly where they would go, but I would imagine they were in the center of the flower. So why is this tiara so special? Well, it's just one of those ones I think everybody had on their list for Catherine to wear for her wedding. It was on one of my lists. It was actually my favorite to see on Catherine for her wedding and then exchanged to Princess Beatrice or Princess Eugenie. You know, Megan was in there maybe slightly, mostly because I wanted to see it, not necessarily wanted to see it on Megan. And so this has been one that many people have just been sort of salivating for for years we've wanted to see this tiara and so to have the first appearance of it it was a shock because for a long time it had been rumored or thought that the tiara was actually too delicate to be worn and you can kind of see some of that in the frame there's not a lot of you could say strong attachments between the separate pieces so I could see why it's not probably as strong as some other tiaras and so I really was thinking, well, maybe it's too delicate. And I was like, oh man, I really wish so that they could just fix that. I mean, I had been advocating for that for a while. And apparently there could have actually been issues because it is an older piece, but they made it sufficiently strong enough for Catherine to wear. And my only caveat, my only grave disappointment about this tiara appearance is whoever was the photographer, because these pictures are not good. <laughs> Even Queen Camilla, who will talk about her tiara as well, the pictures are actually not great. And actually, Camilla, as you can see, that her tiara is actually blurry because the, the photographers, their, their point of focus was just mostly on sort of the lower half of her face and her neckline. It wasn't to the upper half. And that is a failure on the part of the photographer. And we had Christopher Jackson there last year, and he got some insane pictures, especially some really good close-up pictures of her tiara, the clarity of which you could see the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot actually gave me a better appreciation for it because I could actually really see the details in it in a way I felt like I really hadn't before on anybody else. And the Brits are sort of different in how they 
run these sort of events because they don't allow a lot of photographers. I imagine there was just one, maybe two. And I feel like this is something that Brits, I'm really hoping, change. A lot of the other European households brought in who can attend and take pictures of certain events. Obviously, there are crowd controls and those sorts of things. But I have actually been at a royal event. I've actually had press credentials. I did not get to the... I did... I wasn't given access to the event where you could see the tiaras, but I could see the videos and I could tell there were probably a good 10 people there getting pictures and videos. And the advantage of that is, is that if you do get somebody who does not get the greatest pictures, you might have somebody who got greater pictures. And it seems to me like this person who took the photos was not necessarily super experienced in taking pictures of this sort of thing, because even the pictures of Catherine, they're so far away that even when you blow them up, you just don't get the crisp details that you did in the pictures that Chris Jackson got last year. And so this to me is a point of contention. I do actually, I've attended royal events as a photographer a journalist so I've actually taken pictures and this feels like pictures I would have taken (laughs) which is which is not a compliment so overall for the sake of the pictures and just be being such an historic occasion to see this tiara again the fact that we don't have fantastic detailed pictures of it I think is just a travesty in a lot of ways it just really disappoints me but other than that I am thrilled as punch to see this tiara again And we do also have Queen Camille also wearing a new tiara to her. And this is a Burmese ruby tiara. And it's one that's a result of Queen Elizabeth cannibalizing another, and I would argue, better tiara. So Queen Elizabeth, for her wedding, she was given several gifts, including tiaras and jewelry. And one of them was by Nizam of Hyderabad and Barar. And I'm mispronouncing that. He is an Indian prince. And so he told her, go into Cartier and choose whatever you want. So she chose a necklace, which Catherine has worn before. It's this very decadent necklace. And a tiara and a couple of brooches. And so Queen Elizabeth wore this tiara for several years. And I love that it has this rose design. I think it's a quite beautiful piece. We don't have, we have some good pictures of it, but not like absolutely fantastic because we've never actually seen pictures of this tiara in color. They've only ever been in black and white. But Queen Elizabeth also got 96 rubies from Burma. So that is Myanmar, if you do not know. And she decided that she wanted to incorporate those rubies into a new tiara. So she cannibalized her other one. And so she had Gerard design the Burmese ruby tiara. And apparently the the rubies are, a lot of them are put into flower elements on there. I personally think this is somewhat a poorly designed tiara because I don't really feel the flowers here. I just don't feel like the flowers were well presented. I don't know if that, who that went with in the process, but I almost feel like the red is so bright and stark that it sort of takes you away. And it feels like the, the rubies are not incorporated within the diamonds as much as you might anticipate that it sort of takes away. Like an example is the Danish tiara that Crown Princess Mary wears. I love this ruby tiara. I love the mixture of the leaf elements and the berries. I think these work quite well. We also have the peacock tiara in the Netherlands, in addition to the Dutch ruby Melorio tiara, which I think is gorgeous. And so this one to me, I just don't like it. And I don't think it's balanced well. And it is interesting to note though, that the 96 rubies she was given represent the 96 diseases that you can have. And so that it's supposed to protect you from diseases. So I really appreciate that she had decided to take these rubies that she received and make them into a new tiara. I just don't think this tiara is particularly pretty and I miss the old one. So I'm going to be totally honest. Maybe the original frame exists because I've never been a fan of this one. And we do also have something interesting to note, which is that the Oriental Circlet Tiara, which is one that Queen Camilla has not worn yet, which was designed by King Albert for Queen Victoria, also featured originally opals. So there's just an interesting side note here because apparently Queen Elizabeth wanted a ruby tiara because her mother liked the Oriental Circlet and she just let her mother use it. And so she needed her own ruby tiara, apparently. And so she decided to design it with these rubies. But what's interesting about the Oriental Circlet is that it originally had opals in it. And the reason it had opals removed is because Queen Alexandra, so who was the wife of the king that came after Victoria, thought opals were bad luck. So she had them removed. And Queen Alexandra also had the opals that were originally in the necklace Queen Camilla is wearing removed and replaced with the crown ruby. So that necklace is known as the Queen's necklace or the crown necklace. 
Okay, and last startling appearance that we saw from tiaras was the Gloucester Diamond and Emerald Bandeau tiara, which apparently hasn't been seen in 40 plus years. So this was another like really exciting moment here. And it was inherited from Queen Mary and received by Princess Alice when she married the Duke of Gloucester in 1935. And so this is obviously not the Princess Alice who was the Duchess of Gloucester in 1935. This is her daughter-in-law, the now Duchess of Gloucester. And so it can be worn as all diamonds or it has emeralds that can be put in as well and we just haven't seen this one there's no clear reason why we haven't seen this one but it's exciting to see two historic pieces but I gotta say Catherine's reappearance with this tiara was such a an exciting surprise and blessing I think everybody who's been clamoring to see this tiara for years was thrilled and I have to say I'm thrilled as well it was such an amazing thing to see that such an historic piece that has been like something people have wanted for just ages and ages so guys thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again really really soon bye we don't count the carrots we count the centuries